Hey folks, uh, welcome to This Week in History, I am Mike. I'm Will. And uh, in This Week in History, uh, Will looks up an event from history, mm-hmm. from this week, and yep. then explains it to me, and he has one hour to do it. That many. That's right. What are we talking about today, Will? Today we're talking about Caligula becoming the Emperor of Rome. Caligula, the famous Roman Emperor, becoming the famous... Roman Emperor. Roman Emperor. One hour. Ready? One hour. Ready. Doing. Bam. So, Caligula. That's not his real name. Okay. Starting with, that's his nickname. Yes. Um, his I've, read actual... about, I've read a little bit about him. I know that. Yeah. People people have heard the name Caligula. There's a movie about Caligula. Ooh. It's real trippy. Uh, acid type movie back in, like, what, the 1970s it was made? Late 60s, early 70s. Late 60s, man. early 70s. Malcolm McDowell, the guy made famous for Clockwork Orange and a bajillion other things. Very right. talented uh, actor. And just real mind trip of a movie. Lots of excess. Uh, and that kind of taps into uh, some of the legends about Caligula. Because there's a lot of legends about this. Also guy. a rated X movie, too? I Isn't believe it was one was... of the first rated X movies. Yeah, wasn't it? That shows how bad... Rome was. Yeah, it just, or it's, naughty Rome was, it anyway. It was basically like if you mix 70s style and everything we think about Roman depravity. Yeah. And then there's like Caligula. There you go. <laughs> Even the trailer makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> just so like, you've not watched this movie? I have not watched this movie. My brother watched it and said, don't. Yeah, maybe That I was his review. But uh, Sounds like a movie I'll have to check out I tonight. I think we might have to watch it. Not together, though. That might be weird. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, uh, his actual name is Gaius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. Germa- or Germanicus. Germanicus. Not like Dramaticus. Ger- not Dramaticus. Uh, I'm Caesar. I'm Caesar. Uh. Oh, that sounds like a, a really good name, though, Germanicus. for uh, a spoof oh, of, sure. a hero, yeah. of, a, of a Roman emperor. Dramaticus, like everything he does is, ha oh, yeah. friends, heavens, countrymen. Uh, it's oh. all- Dramaticus again. Oh, God, this guy never shuts. He's just the most obnoxious guy in the Senate. All right. Or it's, it's like an insult. Anytime a, a guy over asks, oh, okay, Caesar Dramaticus, right. why don't you just calm down? <laughs> we should use that. Let's write a play. Write that down. Make, Make a note. Make Dramaticus. A note. Uh, so, yes, he was named Gaius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. Uh, he has this name because his father was called Germanicus mm-hmm. um, because of his achievements in Germania. Uh, Germania, 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 which is modern day Germany. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Got to know a little bit about the man's past to know yep. about the man. Uh, and he was called uh, Gaius Caesar Augustus because he was named after uh, Caesar Augustus, there you who go. took the name Gaius Caesar. And we talked about that in our uh, Augustus becoming the emperor. That he was like, yeah, I'm just gonna go by Gaius Caesar now. Oh, have we pinned like down? Grandpa. So I read a book recently in the last year about uh, the the Roman emperors, and it was awful because it's out of order. It's just out of order. It's really hard to read. Is that? Uh, do we know that one just so we can not recommend it to I people? I think it's Tacitus. <laughs> Suetonius is the guy who writes the Twelve Caesars, and that's what the one I'm reading. Yeah. And he keeps it in order. That's nice. Um, it can get confusing though, because like he mentions a Nero, but it's a it's not Emperor Nero. Oh, it's no. it's uh, actually uh, Caligula has a brother named Nero, yeah. and a brother named Drusus. There's you know there's a finite number of names, but I think yes. it's Tacitus, where it's just like. <sighs> It's just a, it's a slog, because it does bounce all over the yeah. place. And so many of the names are really similar, yeah. so it just... That becomes meaningless after it, a while. It does, because yeah. it, it'd be just like using, you know, well, Will, son of Will, cousin of Will, did stuff. So when Will did this, and Will did that, and Will really? did this, and you don't clarify who's who, right. it's very confusing. Um, and he doesn't use, like, the honorific names of the, the, the Roman characters. Like, Germanicus, that's not the guy's name, that's his... He did stuff in Germany, so he okay. got the title Germanicus. But yeah. it'd be like calling him, I think his actual first name was like uh, Agrippa. And there's 7,000 Agrippas <laughs> throughout Roman history. Hmm. And most of the daughters have the same name Oh yeah. of the family. It's just like Tiberia would be Tiberius' daughter. Oh, right. And there's six Tiberius. <laughs> so you're like, which one? It gets very confusing. Anyway, I brought that up just to ask the question, though. This is, uh, Caligula comes uh, uh, after Augustus. He's the third emperor of Rome. There we go, third so, emperor of Rome. The first emperor of Rome is uh, Caesar Augustus. The guy who was almost the first emperor was Julius Caesar. So it's, Julius Caesar is about to become king. Oh, that's right. Gets murdered by the Senate on the Ides of March, which that's happened close. this week in history. That's true. And I was going to do that. But everybody does it, so we'll do next, maybe next year. Yeah, we'll see. But we'll do Ides of March, just because. But we also, I think, have talked about his assassination pretty recently. Yeah. yeah. So it didn't feel like we need to jump into that. Yeah. Uh, so Caesar gets uh, <coughs> murdered. Uh, Octavian takes his name to get popular. 
and then uh, is given the title Augustus, which is godlike, godly, yep. uh, and then makes the whole being the emperor, that's, he's the first emperor, and he makes it like a divine thing. And Octavian has, or Augustus, now we'll call him Augustus because yep. that's his name now, uh, has this plan of, of succession. He's going to, you know, this is my heir, and this is my second heir, just in case. It's a smart idea. It's sure. a high mortality rate. It's yeah. very, I mean, his great uncle just, you know, got murdered by 32 old men with pokey things, and he's been fighting wars. So it's not, yeah. it's not secure yet, right? It's so a you, good idea. You, you at least have some, uh, you would think that'd be a, a thing anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe not a second year, but uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Line, and, of, line and, of succession. Right? Yes. And wealthy Romans were, were big on writing out a lengthy will. So and so, and they would do, you know, this much money to this many like when caesar died people were freaking out excited about reading his will oh yeah they're like what's what did julius leave us yeah. and he left like millions of what's called sesterci which is a silver coin that's Sistertia. and he left millions of that to the poor of rome oh, that's nice. yeah caesar was he it's like even at, when he died he was he was making political moves he was making right, allies yeah. like and then he you know he's written down in history as one of the greatest men in history good or bad really famous um so Augustus has a plan. Uh, his two heirs both die uh, untimely deaths, whether through sickness. Um, they're not, like, murdered, sure, I don't sure. believe, but sure. don't know. Uh, and he picks, he picks a guy named Tiberius to be his heir. Now, Tiberius doesn't really want to. <laughs> That's the entirety of his 27-year reign, basically, is I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be the emperor. But he which is... is Oftentimes, like a good thing, you know, sure. you pick the guy who wants the job the least because oftentimes they make they make a good pick. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you have these great potential leaders, but when you have not great potential leaders, you know, you don't pick Jim the janitor to be the emperor, not because he doesn't want it, but he's also not really qualified. Right, there's a fine line you know, between uh, humble but qualified. Exactly, and Tiberius is. Uh, he hasn't been groomed for the position. He doesn't like the divinity aspect of it. Uh, he's very private. He's considered uh, uh, one of the uh, historians of the time. Dio wrote, not not Ronnie James, Dio. Right, right. Although I thought momentarily. The writing would have been Ronnie. way cooler. Like, Tiberius is the greatest ever, and he fought a witch on a dragon. For those of you who don't know, John, Ronnie James, Dio, legend. Black Sabbath. Yeah, I know. I've heard Rainbow. the name. I, 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 awesome. I wouldn't be able to quote him or anything. But. He wrote Rainbow in the Dark, Man in the Silver Mountain, Holy Diver. Ah, uh, you're just killing me today, Mike. All my jokes are... Well, I'm not the funny one. It doesn't matter. That's your job. I've you... heard of Holy Diver. Okay. <laughs> I will... I'll, I'll sing it at the end. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Dio was uh, one of the uh, historian at the time. I think it was uh, Cassius Dio. Okay. And he... Uh, wrote that Tiberius was the most solemn man in Rome. Oh. He's just... <sighs> didn't like it. Not having fun, buddy? Yeah, so he's he's this kind of a grim guy, uh, and after Augustus dies, that's the guy who gets picked. Uh, and Tiberius actually is best known for his son, because his son, Germanicus, is a legend. This guy's amazing. We'll talk about him in just a sec. But uh, So Tiberius is, you know, gonna be king and he takes the tech crown and he like refuses the laurels he doesn't want the laurel he doesn't want the divine ceremony he's just kind of like eh, give me the yeah, stick just want to be king i'm in charge yeah because right. it's in augustus's will and that's like divine mandate oh, he has to do it you have to do it <laughs> just, eh, I wanna do it. Uh, so he largely leaves running of rome to the senate I'm sure they're happy with that. They're happy with that. They're yeah. very happy with that. That's they nice actually nice. spend more time debating what he means, like with his missives, hmm. than what to actually do about it. Okay. Like they're like, "What is this?" He's just like, you know, feed the people. What did he mean by feed the people? Mm. The people. To all. the lions, <laughs> all no, the people. No. The rich people or the poor people? Know. You know, they, there's a lot of debate. Sounds like a lot of willful misinterpretation, I bet. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think you can't have the Roman Senate without willful misinterpretation. Yeah. You can't have any ruling body without somebody <laughs> just going, I don't think that's what that means. Just to be a contrary. You can't have everybody in agreement. That's people not are the worst. They are the worst. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you deal with people. You're They're a person. The I'm the worst. I'm a person. We're, we're, we're terrible. We're terrible. <laughs> cats, cats are next worst because they're just... 
Yeah, we're judging you, cat. There's a cat watching us. Anyway, uh, so Tiberius really doesn't want the gig. Uh, leaves it largely to the Senate. He shows up for events. Uh, he does have ideas about things he wants to do. Sure. But he's like a soldier. He was a soldier. He was a campaign guy. Um, and he wasn't supposed to be king, so he's not used to this fancy stuff. Yeah. He's not really used to it. Um, and King Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've not seen the movie King Ralph. <laughs> It's a great flick. Well, yeah, Peter O'Toole. Uh, and, yeah, definitely not suited for kingship. Okay. <laughs> John Goodman. He's wonderful, but Make not great for it. Later we'll be watching Caligula and King Ralph back There we back. go. Um, so, yeah, he takes office at 55. So he's not a young man in Rome. 55 is not old. Sure. Well, but in, in Rome, that's, you know, you, yeah. you've done all your stuff. Yeah. You're getting ready for retirement. Sure. Uh, and he decides, or so he's got some plans for his own heirs already. Okay. Because he's, he's a little older. Yeah. His plans were not to be... <laughs> His original plan was never to be emperor in the first darn place. Uh, so he selects Germanicus. And Germanicus um, is very famous at this time. Like, he is... He's already designated as the heir. Okay. So he's already moving on up. Uh, and he's particularly well suited for this because he's extremely brave and very talented. So if you're brave, fine. But you charge into speeding traffic. That, sure, sure. That's not going to work. Yeah, you need but the combo. You need the talent, right? <laughs> right. He's like, oh, yes, let's go to this cool brave thing. I'm like, oh, my God, this is the dumbest plan ever. Um, so he gets sent out with his brother, uh, Claudius, who's also a, a famous guy. Uh, I think it was Claudius. No, it wasn't Claudius. Claudius is a different guy. I gotta get my names right. There's so many uses and yeses, and I have a gajillion notes. He sends Germanicus with his son, not Germanicus' his son. Mm. Although Germanicus brings his son with him. Okay. His sons, and Germanicus has three sons. He has Nero, Drusus, and they're kind of being reared to be his heirs. And okay. then he has his baby son, who's Gaius. Gaius. And everyone calls him Caligula, which means in Latin, little boot. Little boot. Little boot. A because little boot. he wears a tiny soldier's outfit. He's two, but he's dressed as a little legionnaire. Aww. So it's adorable. Like, sure. like the soldiers are like, oh my god, look at the baby soldier. That's so cute. And it is. It's adorable. The concept of, boot. they give him, he's got the little tiny, uh, what the Roman boots were was just like a reinforced sandal. Ooh. It's a bad name for a boot because it yeah. doesn't cover the whole thing. But the bottom is just covered in hobnails. It's just like little iron studs. Okay. Um, so very sturdy on the bottom of your feet, not the best in Germany, cold. Yes, yeah. um, but yeah, so he's got these not little good for the knees. Yeah, and it, it's uh, it's Caligae is uh, the boot. That's the Roman oh, soldier okay. boot. So Caligula, little boot, little boot. So he gets this name, which eventually he grows to hate. Sure. Because you don't want to be an adult known as the little boot. It's probably a cute nickname for a, a chunk of time, and then. Yep. Yeah, like it so was. Much. That's literally what my my brother calls my cat. His little boots, because yeah. he looks like he has little boots on his yeah. little feet. And my brother is like, oh, he's just little boots. Oh. That's cat, Caligula. Your cat now is my, now Cat Caligula. Yes. My cat is Caligula. Cat Caligula. Cat Caligula. Here you go. And it explains so much because he's just, he just thinks he's the emperor. Sure, they might be. Cats, maybe. Cats. I mean, we do feed them at our own expense. Mm -hmm. We do kind of whatever they want. Uh, they poop in a box. We yep. pick it up. I think cats have it made. Yeah. They haven't figured out. They won the war. Yep. So uh, Caligula's following his dad, literally like at his heel. I'm imagining just little tiny Caligula riding his dad's foot around the camp. Sure, sure. <laughs> Waving a teeny tiny sword, ready to go fight some Germans. Germanicus has this crazy idea that he he, he has like kind of an ambitious idea. I shouldn't Let's say crazy. It it's out. not crazy. Let's hear it um, out. But he's dispatched because there's a mutiny. This, this whole legion is just like, nope, this job sucks. We don't like being on the border of the, the German forest. Um, and there's like kind of this bad vibe to Germany for the Romans. They have one of the greatest losses in Roman history was a man named Varus charged into Germany and was like, I'm going <coughs> to conquer this. And his entire, like three legions were annihilated Ooh. and disappeared. It was like the forest swallowed them. Oh, no. Uh, and it was called the, the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest. And nobody really knew what happened. It's been shown in film, uh, but basically the rough assumption is they were marching through the woods, they didn't really know what to expect, and they were arrogant, 
I'm like, we're the Roman legions. There's 10,000 of us. We're the most skilled killers in the world. And basically all of the German army attacked him at once. And the Germans did not fight like the Romans. Mm. They would strip sometimes naked and have an axe or a, a pair of spears and just charge like lunatics into battle. Uh, German people were largely, well, larger. Sure. Uh, Romans are fairly short at this time. They're like five, six to five, eight was like their average height. Uh, the Germans, a lot of them were closer to six feet. Big, they, they had a different diet. Uh, they had a different concept of, of what a warrior was supposed to do. Whereas a yeah. Roman, you, you had a specific job. And the, Ro uh, the Roman way was working together. The German way was be the craziest, bravest, toughest SOB you can be by yourself. It was about an individual warrior's skill versus working as a unit. Oh, okay. So these, Which probably works well in the woods. It works great in the woods because you can't really stay in formation with all the trees. Right. So these raging, I mean, this is the classic raging barbarian concept, right? All this imagery you might have been given is largely based on what the Germans did. And oh. they just charged crazy out and just annihilated the Romans. They didn't even leave the bodies behind. They like made them disappear. So nobody really knew what happened to the Legion. For all the Romans knew is maybe the Legion surrendered and just was absorbed. But that's sure. very unlikely. I we're believe, Germans now. <laughs> yeah, there were bits and pieces found. And there were some stragglers that escaped that said, we got annihilated. But largely it was, don't know the details. Mystery. All right. um, also hugely important, the standards were captured. Romans don't like when the big flagpole gets captured. Now do we know who's in charge? Yeah. And the, the flagpoles are gold. They're all Ooh. solid gold eagles. Well, that might be why. Also very expensive, <laughs> yeah. So when you made a new legion, you made them a special new standard, and you didn't get a new one. You had to go mm. get it back. You get one, and you can't you replace it. You got, you got to pay for that. Exactly. <laughs> and a Roman soldier can't afford that if he lived to be 10,000 years old. Yeah. He couldn't afford that. So this is very important. The standard bearer's job is considered sacred. Uh, there were events in history where like Caesar would ride up, grab a standard, and just huck it over a wall at the enemy, and his guys would go, no, and charge off after it to get the standard. That's like one way to motivate, motivate people. Super manipulative, great idea. Uh, so the this big campaign was considered like the worst disaster in Roman military history. <laughs> uh, up to that point for sure, oh, sure. and after that even, is considered just wow. the worst thing is a huge disgrace and it's a mostly a mystery too. and it's mostly a mystery nobody really knows what happens so germanicus gets sent to go and handle this mutiny because these guys are like not doing what they're supposed to mm. rather than put down the mutiny he not only gets the mutineers to stop mutinying he gets them to follow him into germany they cross the river oh. into the forest find the standards annihilate the german army go back home after reclaiming all their old territory and he gets a triumph <laughs> for what? this huh. he's just like legend instant legend so what did he, did he do differently he just talked he, to him he talked well so when he went to the soldiers he he was inspirational he wasn't a tyrant yeah. uh, he inspired them he was like we're gonna fight we're all romans this is the glory of Rome. Here we go. You are this. Rome. I'm not Rome. We are. And it was yeah. the old school, like, citizens approach. Because that's what made Rome strong, was it wasn't uh, for a king. It was for all of Rome. Yeah. It's very similar to, like, uh, old school, like, American patriotism. We can understand that where it's uh, not for one of us, all of us. Sure, sure. Kind of a thing. Good old school way of thinking about that where it's not about a king or a, a specific leader or a, the, the rich guy running the thing yeah. it's it's yeah. e easier if you're fighting for us all than yeah and it's for it's for a cause loser. Yeah. yeah some guy sitting in the back and he would lead from the front germanicus yeah. was a valiant warrior even though he'd been kind of you know set up you're going to be a big deal someday he was big on fighting he was he was very big on proper leadership he studied caesar um, he studied Antony. He's actually a grandson of Mark Antony. Oh. So that might be part of why he's inspirational. His, yeah. his grandfather is one of the most legendary field commanders in Roman history. So he's like, yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta live up to that. Yeah. So he returns to Rome and he's given a triumph. It's the first triumph in Rome since, uh, since Augustus was Octavian, like back in 29 BC. So the first time this is in 17 AD. So in like 46 years. That's oh. the first one in, in a very long time where it's a full-on 
this guy's awesome. Well, this stirs up some contempt from certain people. They don't, you know, you don't want somebody to be better than you. Sure. I mean, I, I do. Guess. I'm fine with somebody being better. I don't want to go into the, the forest to yeah. try to kill the Germans. But out of 10,000 people, surely some yeah, people are somebody's got to be mad. Yeah. Um, so this builds up some kind of resentment. Um, and eventually, not long after this, he's poisoned. No! Yeah, the legendary, super mega awesome warrior Germanicus is ah, poisoned. Poison. And he's, he's like Tiberius' top dude. He's, 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 that's his guy. That was his heir. He had this plan. And now he's dead. Um, but it takes a while for him to die. He's very tough. And he accuses this um, kind of rival house of doing it. The guy was a governor of the province in Syria. Yeah. His name was Paizo. And he said, this guy did it. He did. How did he know? Because he, he was there. Like, he was in Antioch, which is in the province. Okay. It's a very wealthy city in the sure. region. And they had, like, a beef. Okay. His family didn't like the Claudian family that uh, Germanicus came from. And they just had it out for each other. So he said, that guy did it. Yeah. I guess I don't know the burden of proof back in ancient yeah. Rome. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, the word of this dude that was, you know, thought to be the next king, that's pretty respectable. So yeah. like, well, we're going to talk to this guy. Yeah, let's have a word. Let's have a word. Well, they plan to bring him to the Senate. And then he starts figuring out pretty fast the Senate probably going to find him guilty. Uh oh While he's there, though, he says a very interesting thing. Tiberius told me to do it. The what? emperor <laughs> told him to do it. Good defense. Good defense. And it's tricky. Everybody kind of goes, wait, what? Why uh, would no. why would why would he kill his uh, best guy? I don't know who to be angry at now. I thought he didn't really want to be the emperor, but maybe he does want to be the emperor. Oh. And he doesn't like his heir being more popular. Playing that's kind some, of like, playing some mind games there. And that's kind of Stalinist, right? Like yeah. Stalin killed anybody who looked like they could be popular. He's like, I, I don't want to be in charge. If you're popular, I All kill right. you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's this whole scandal, right? But the Senate doesn't care. They're like, ah, no, 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 no. We don't care if you say that the emperor did it. We know you did it. We uh -oh. don't. We don't really care why. Yet we'll get to that. <laughs> But you are for sure guilty of it. So you oh. can't say, like, oh, but he made me do it. You're a governor. So although important. He, he did admit that he did it. Yeah. He, okay. he basically like was like, well, yeah, I did it, but I did it because this guy. Oh, oh, so you did it. Uh, oh, crap. I should have died. I should have. If, if I, I, if I if, say the second part, i got to say the first part. If I were <laughs> to have done it, I would have only done it if the emperor told me to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get it? Stab. And then they, yeah. So the Senate all... Or like, yeah, you're 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 going down. So before he can be tried uh, or have the trial brought to conclusion, he kills himself. Oh, well. It's a very Roman thing. Like oh, yes. this is not a, you know, how did he just magically kill himself? Why would he do that? Uh, for the Senate class, for the ruling class especially, and actually any Roman, it was considered kind of a noble way to uh, bury your shame. Huh. Much like oh. in uh, like feudal Japan, sure. samurai would commit uh, seppuku. They yeah. kill themselves ritually. So I mean, like, it does end the discussion. It yeah, it really does. And typically, if somebody's dead, you stop naysaying them. Yep. You know, you don't, yes. you don't bleed it out. It was a way to like protect your family from your disgrace. Like, oh, well, yeah. he did the honorable thing and ended his life, so we're not going to make you destitute and suffer. This did not always work. Even though we want to. Even though we're really <laughs> mad at him, we're not going to take it out on you because he owned up to it. Okay. Mm. And also, we didn't get to rip him apart with wild horses or some crazy idea. If only. Take our fun. C'est la vie. I'm surprised more Romans weren't mad about it. Like, I was going to kill him, though. You you took my fun. <laughs> so this causes some issues, though, because Germanicus was the heir, mm -hmm. and now the emperor has been accused of murdering his heir. Yeah. Uh, Germanicus's widow, uh, Agrippina, she is kind of a formidable woman. Uh, she is very well respected. Her husband was the dude he was the toughest he was this hero and she's not really let, willing to let this slide okay she's not happy about it yeah, but she's got six kids to take care of she's got three daughters three sons she's got to make sure they're taken she they're, wants to talk to the manager she's going to talk to the manager she is the first karen <laughs> karanicus Karanka? i guess maybe we shouldn't do that we should. she did have a good point. she had a really good point like her husband was <laughs> murdered <Yeah. laughs> and she really is not happy about it and yeah. her uh, I think Tiberius is her uncle. 
Okay. So this like you killed your nephew? Like this is because yeah, the families all get yeah, yeah. married together. Like Tiberius had a had a wife, was forced to divorce her by the emperor to marry the emperor's daughter, Augustus's daughter. But Augustus already had adopted him as his son, so he literally made him marry his stepsister. And then that was very crappy relationship, so he dumped her, went back to his first... It's real weird. So Tiberius has this really, like, messed up background, which is probably why he doesn't want to be emperor. Um, But now Agrippina says, this is not okay. My family is in chaos. I don't like it. Yeah. Tiberius, after all of this drama, starts going on long trips into the country. He goes to Capua, which is a a very uh, popular place. Um... And he goes to Capri. Uh, he, he goes to different places. Yeah, and nice pants kind of, there. Yeah. So eventually Capri becomes like his, or Capri, which is an island. And sure. he, that's where he's like got his, it's like his summer palace. Yeah. Well, eventually he just wants to stay there. He's sick of it. He's sick of the whole thing. Uh, and he has this kind of little, run thing. These little juice box bags, yep, little Capri Suns. Hmm. He invented them. Oh, nice. But it was wine. Oh, you know, it's Rome. even better. It's Rome. It's, it's a wine skin, and he mm-hmm. just... Mm. On the beach. Well, who wouldn't want to stay there? Right. right. Well, because his his right hand guy is gone now. Oh. He needs kind of somebody to fill in. Sure. Uh, and he picks this guy, Sejanus. Sejanus is the head of the Praetorian Guard. Okay. The Praetorian Guard are the elite bodyguard of the Roman Emperor. Yeah. They are terrifying. They're a hundred percent loyal and really good at killing people. Sure. Uh, they're also they have those people around you, I guess. Yes, they're also really good at um, figuring out spy rings. Oh, they have their own spy system. Uh, they have their own. They do tax collecting as well. So that like they're kind of the fist of the empire, right. like within Rome itself. Um, they are the only like soldiers allowed to carry weapons throughout the city. Um, if the Praetorian Guards show up, you are in trouble, or you didn't pay your taxes, which also means you're in trouble. Mm, boy. Or the emperor's visiting. Yeah, oh, boy. Okay. And either one of any of those, no, those things, are good. you don't really want that. Like, yeah. why the heck is the emperor visiting? <laughs> what I do, especially if Tiberius shows up, because yeah. he doesn't want to be there anyway. So why is he there? Um, so Sejanus is one of the more controversial figures in Roman history. We're gonna find out why. Okay. But um, yeah, so Tiberius is he's really miserable through all of this, um, and from like 19 A.D. onwards, he's just gone. At 19. A D. A D. Not nineteen eighty. Nineteen yeah, right. Not that's a long time. <laughs> He's a very old man <laughs> at this point. Uh, and Sejanus kind of becomes his go between. Between the Senate and him. Sure. Eventually he starts building statues to Sejanus. Oh. Like he hasn't built around his palace, he hasn't built around Rome, so people like see this as a like an important figure. Mm-hmm. Um, as the head of the Praetorian Guard, the Praetorians also control the post. Oh, okay. So any messages getting passed in between anybody. Sure, all news and everything. The Praetorians are in charge of it. Control of information is important. It is. And Sejanus realizes this. Oh. So he is now the only point of contact between the Emperor and the Senate. Well, surely he won't abuse this position. He won't abuse this. Well, Agrippina has been kind of mouthy in his opinion. She's accusing... Tiberius of maybe murdering her husband and endangering her children. Who are she's still on about this? Who are the heirs? There's Nero <coughs> and Drusus, and they're heirs. So oh. he's like, well, Nero's obviously a traitor, so we're gonna exile him. Oh, so Nero gets sent into exile. This is not the emperor Nero. Yeah, okay, totally different guy. Another guy. And then Drusus. Where do you where do you go for exile now? Uh, in, in usually, these, like in a, these, a province far away. No. Um, but for them, I think they stayed in Italy, close but removed, okay. and they were under guard constantly. This wasn't like nice exile. Oh, yeah. Because not long after this, Nero dies of starvation. Oops. Well, that's not a nice. <laughs> ne- Got to find a better B and B there <laughs> <Right>. in your exile. <laughs> he was either he either died of starvation or was just murdered. Sure. And they said he starved. Poisoned by lack of food. <laughs> And then Drusus is sent into exile, and guess what happens to him? He found a better bed and breakfast? No. no. He well, maybe, but he died like he like not long later. Huh. He died in thirty one. Unfortunate, maybe. unfortunate Un- series of events for these children. Um, also, the sisters are two of the sisters are sent away. No, bye. Except for uh, Lavilla, she's allowed to stay. 
Now, Lavilla is interesting because Sejanus wanted to marry her. He is not from one of these super fancy families. Okay. So he wants to marry, like, Tiberius's, like, granddaughter, basically. The emperor's grandchild. And he's like, huh? Can I marry her? And all the Senate was like, no. The Praetorian Guard is not marrying into the royal family and setting himself up to be king. But That's maybe. not happening. But and so he's like, I, I didn't really mean it. I'm not. I'm fine. <laughs> but things start to move. Sejanus, now controlling all of this stuff, sets himself up to be consul. Oh, okay. That's like almost as good as it's, emperor. Yeah, it is. It's because the, they still have the consuls. They still have some say. Yep. Uh, they kind of preside over the Senate, and they're kind of above the Senate, below the emperor, kind of a thing. <laughs> like and, a sandwich. Yeah, and then his co-consul is the emperor, but he's not there, so he has all the power. Oh, okay. Nice. Smart. And then eventually the Senate gets a little letter from Tiberius, and they say, he says this is crap, <laughs> oh. and you're a traitor. <laughs> Uh-oh. And also... Turns out, you were probably planning to murder him. And it's revealed that there's this conspiracy to kill Tiberius. They've isolated him in his little community. Mm -hmm. They've exiled his family. They've had people killed. You know, uh, his heirs are gone. And there was a thought that maybe Sejanus was going to be set up to be emperor if he got rid of Tiberius. Oh. And his co-conspirator is Lavilla, the granddaughter that he wanted to marry. Lavilla. So they both get tried and are executed like that. Oh, no. <laughs> and apparently Tiberius goes on a bit of a rampage. Okay. In one of the histories, it says that he killed everybody he could. And they make it sound like it was just like a deluge of blood. But other historians have said, so a total of 52 people were charged with treason during his entire reign. Okay. Half of them were let go. Uh, four of them, it was found out to be wrong, so they weren't charged with anything. So at most, like, 25 people were executed. Okay. So That's not... Somewhere between a yeah, it, 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 flood it, of blood and... <laughs> and 25 people. 25. Which is still a lot, but it's... Sure, it's, it's more than I've ever killed. Yeah, and same. It's exactly 25 more people <laughs> I've ever killed. Yeah, who's coming? How many... Mm, yeah, Mike's all secretive now. So I'm just saying. So anyway, yeah, so th these guys... Uh, the historians, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Do they have a political motive? How mad are they about this? How far removed from the event? Right. Um, and also, you know, do you want to sell your book? Sensationalism. Sure, sure. So, um, he does kill a bunch of people tied to this treason. And then he becomes worse. Now he's like on a tear. Oh, apparently yeah. apparently once, they woke him up. Once from you get his, riled. He was mad. Uh, and he kind of starts cracking down on people, and he starts pulling in people closer to him, so he has direct control of them. And one of them, surprisingly, is Caligula. Oh, okay. Now, Tiberius is the one who ordered the deaths of all of in his family. Like he's the one who ordered that his brother, that Caligula's brothers, be exiled, and then they died in exile. Like Sejanus is blamed, but Tiberius signed the orders. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's still responsible for all this horrible stuff. He's the one who like led to Agrippina being just miserable and off on her own. Um, and he very well may have killed Germanicus. Not really sure. He could That could have been true. So Caligula is brought to live with him in, uh, when was that? 31. Uh, so at this time, Caligula is 19 years old. Now, yeah. it's reported from here on out that Tiberius's home is a center for some of the worst debauchery and depravity of a sexual nature ever. Tiberius. In Tiberius's house. That he was with young men, mm -hmm. that he was with children, that he did unspeakable acts to these people. Who did? Tiberius. Tiberius did this, all right. It's to Caligula. To Caligula. All right, so Caligula is, like is, is going to be worse, but all right. Right, so Caligula is like a victim of this. Oh, right. He's living in the house of the guy who destroyed his entire family. And it's maybe a center for uh, molestation, um, drugs, like forced, all kind Bad, sure. like bad. We don't need to go into all the details other than to say, this is very, very bad. And this is in Rome? And this is in, in Rome. Rome. Okay. Even in Rome's... Yeah, this, so this is still at Capri. 
So okay. this, this so it's on an isolated island oh, too. Geez. There's no escape. Nothing goes wrong with big rich people on islands. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, with young people that they just cart in to do horrible things to, and they have all the soldiers and yeah. Yep, fine. Um, there's you know grooming, what we call grooming nowadays, where it's you know getting young people to think this is okay, uh, and it's just this horrible situation. That's at the worst. At the best, at the very best of what this is, Caligula is forced to live with the guy who may have had his entire family exterminated. Yeah, it's a little rough. At the best, that's what's going on. And he can't go anywhere. He can't leave. He has no rights. He can't leave. Uh, eventually, fortunately, for the world, Tiberius dies. Oh. Uh, <laughs> just by accident? He just or? died. Legend. There's, there's two versions. One, okay. he just died. He's old. Sure. He's dead. The other is that during... Now, this is, this is fact. While he was a prisoner here, um, young Caligula becomes friends with this, the head of the Praetor, the new head of the Praetorian Guard after Sejanus is killed. Um, and his name is Macro. Uh, macro? Macro. It, it's longer. It's sure, sure. Uh, Navius Sutorius Macro. Now, macro is <coughs> considered a man of honor. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to like Tiberius. Because... He doesn't like the whole heavy-handed murder frenzy. Uh, and also, if it's true, doesn't like the whole rape, molestation, drugging sure. people. Awful. He doesn't see it as proper Roman. Not a fan. Um, yeah. So, he, And he's friends with Caligula. So he feels bad for what this kid has had to deal with. And he's a bit, he's older. He's like 20 years old. He's like, he's a grown up. Okay. Um, he's, and he's, he's a Praetorian, so he's been doing stuff for years. Like he's a fighter, a killer. Um, a veteran, a, a hardcore Roman patriot guy who, you know, this is the way Rome's supposed to be. And Sejanus was a disgrace to us, and we're going to make it better. We're going to be a better Praetorian guard than that guy was. We can do it. We can do it. Make so, it better tomorrow. Correct. So the theory Zoom is that better. either, and it depends on which uh, historian you read, uh, is that Tiberius just died because he was older, or Macro killed him. Okay. He smothered him in his sleep, or probably didn't even have to wait for him to be in bed because he's an old man and Macro's this big Praetorian killing machine. All right, so just uh, at some point he had a pillow. Yep. And he had a pillow alone, and alone yeah. time. Yep, right. yep, yep. Or it could be like in Gladiator, he just hugged him real hard until he died. Crunch. Yeah. Crunch. Uh, but so Tiberius is killed. Uh, in Tiberius's will, he left the empire split between uh, Caligula. And uh, a guy named Gemellus, who's Caligula's cousin, um, and another grandson of Tiberius's. Because they're all related. Yeah, yeah. Um, Makes things easier for them. Tiberius is not well liked. Caligula is seen as a victim of this guy. Yeah. Poor little Caligula. And he's an ancestor. Poor little boot. He's, yeah, poor little boot. And he's an ancestor of these legendary people, and his father was the man who, yeah. like, you know, brought back the. The, the uh, standards from Germany. He's Germanicus, yeah. right? So this is a good dude. Agrippina was considered like a, the true Roman woman. This kid's going to be great. This guy's going to be great. So they, he comes back with this will, and he's like, can we get this Gemellus guy out of the will? I don't want to rule it with him. I just want, oh. I think I should just be the emperor. Mm -hmm. And the Senate's like, yeah, this is stupid. So they annul the will, and they just give it all to Caligula, and mm -hmm. like, you're in charge. Okay. So everybody's like, cool. So you know we could do that with let's, wills. Let's I'm sure. Do it. Let's do I'm sure it. Sure, Tiberius yeah. was happy about that. Well, yeah, dead. Hey, hey. I, his ghost comes. Hey, hey, hey! And then they go. No one cares what you think. Oh. Macro wrote what happened on Cap. They just burn Capri to the ground. Let's start over. Um, I hope. <laughs> oh, maybe. there's not enough bleach in the world to wash that place clean. Um, Capri's still a place, though, right? Mm-hmm. I don't some think the, I'd go there. Some of the little juice box things is not as funny to me. It's not as funny, you know. <laughs> I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna warn you. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> just let you drown yourself in your. It's Capri still stuff. funny. It's it was still, still funny, funny then. Still, it was still worth the gag. Damn it. <laughs> All right, it gets better, but yes. it also gets worse. But Great. it gets better. Right. Um, so, the first six months are awesome it's wild like it is like a night and day difference between tiberius the brooding 
at best. So best case scenario, sure. brooding guy who didn't want the job. Worst case scenario, despotic tyrant who ruled from afar and did horrible things to children. But either way, a grumpy Gus. Boy. Either way, <laughs> yeah. Regardless, also grumpy. <laughs> also doesn't want to rule anything. At least the guy who didn't want to rule wasn't killing us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, when Caligula is given this opportunity to come in and be the emperor, he seems to take to it pretty solidly. He does believe in the divinity of the office. Okay. Uh, he believes that he, he should be you know, the king is in charge. Of course he believes in that. He's yep. the he's one the, who is. <laughs> yeah, he's, I do think this is divine. Exactly. Uh, he takes to it just like, he's seen as possibly a next Augustus. Okay. Like, oh yeah, this is the guy. He's got this force of personality. Uh, he doesn't have the the self-doubt. He's very assured of himself. Um, and he is, he's 25. So okay. he comes in, he's this strapping young man. I'm going to rule this country. Ha, ha, ha. Prime of his Roman life. Yeah, and it, he is. Uh, despite, you know, not having... Any of the experience that his brothers were given sure. as a soldier, I mean, he campaigned, but he was two, right? <laughs> Still counts. I stabbed Still counts. <laughs> um, it's more campaigning than most of these guys have done. Sure, yeah. So he's he's the heir, and he's he's in charge. So when he becomes the emperor, he's seen as noble and moderate. Uh, he immediately rips up all of these treason letters and just says, "This is done. We're done with this whole death." squad thing okay. we're not going to just drag people out of their homes call them traitors and murder them and stab them and do horrible stuff we're not nice. going to confiscate Seems lands like a good policy we're done with that yeah that was tiberius i'm not tiberius new beginning um he settles some debts for the the working class no. uh he's like okay there were some taxes that were that hit you guys really hard oh. so we're going to have some tax relief uh, we're going to have a big celebration yeah. to bring in this new era. Well, this new emperor sounds great. Yeah. Uh, he does some building. Sure. Uh, he focuses on uh, two aqueducts, the Aqua Claudia and the Anio Novus. The Claudia is the one where, like, if you if you see, like, this picture of Rome and there's this beautiful road that's, like, kind of straight, has these big trees, and there's just this gigantic column of yeah, yeah, yeah. aqueducts that's the aqua claudia okay. it's massive there, there were a lot of aqueducts. i thought it was a monorail <laughs> it does actually kind of look like a monorail, I didn't think it was monorail. Um, but it isn't right yes i know but it's kind of the same concept big sure. columns thing over the top and it carries water water uh, it, that's considered a good thing yeah uh water. but he does without question believe in the unconstrained personal power of the emperor but look what i've done well look what <laughs> i've done Exactly. Now I can do whatever I want. So he's doing all this other stuff. Uh, he's he's very generous immediately with all of this. He uh, he destroys the treason papers. Uh, he frees people that were imprisoned for this. Um, he gets rid of. I feel like this is a very personal thing for him, but uh, it's referred to as sexual deviance. Probably people who were predators and he, oh, he gets rid of sexual. He gets demons. rid of them. He exiles them. Right. He doesn't just straight up murder them because sometimes you can't always prove everything. Sure, it's just like guess. anybody who is accused of this crap, you're out of Rome. You're a freak. Get out. You're gone. I don't now, like you. I got bad childhood memories. Probably. You have to take into consideration too what's considered like a deviant in Roman society. It mm -hmm. was considered okay to be with a man or a woman. That's fine. Sure. Going after young people. Is not fine. Not that fine. is considered not okay. What was okay? their what was their age of young consent? So the age of a like where people came into their own is usually considered like sixteen. Okay. Uh, I think thirteen was when people started getting married a lot of the time because that's when you're able to have kids. Yeah. Uh, but that was usually through arrangement. Okay. And also remember different time mortality rate is crazy high. Sure, you sure. Got to make babies. Um, I'm making no judgment at all. I just right. wanted to know. But if you were still considered in your minority, mm -hmm. you're off limits. Yeah. And there were people that didn't care about that. Right. And then there was also very common grooming, finding young men that they found attractive and grooming them and then just making them their lover and then discarding them when they got too old. I like Pluto. The, yeah. And there was also considered like like a big age gap of if it was this many years apart, that's kind of considered gross. Uh -huh. If you're 50 and they're 16, eh, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Um, so they had, they had unless you're rich enough, I, right. I would imagine. But at the time, they really didn't have this view of like homosexuality or heterosexuality. It was just kind of like, well, if you find the person attractive, whatever. Right. Um, 
just you know consenting adults behind closed whatever you want to do you do it I don't care cool. right. but underage meh yeah. incest meh these are huge no-nos and they're used as common attacks against something like even if you don't necessarily know that this Roman is doing something bad like oh well, no he did He's having sex with children, and he's he uh, slept with his sister and his mother and his his grandmother, and he's just a vile thing. And you're like, is this rhetoric? And you're angry, or did this actually happen? Or a little of both. A little bit of look on A, look on B. It's like maybe not grandma, but sister's sure, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's just a common thing that happens yes. throughout Roman history. Well, um, it comes to things throughout all history of yeah. affecting someone's sexual nature. Yeah. I mean, of undermining their character. Even, even in recent times. Yep. Yep. Everybody's like, ah, you, you cheated and did that. Yep. So yeah, it's it's easy it's easy currency. Yeah. Right. It's easy money that you'll you'll get for political points. Ah, well, this person's. Nah, 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 nah. So it's been going on for forever. This is nothing new. Um, there's this huge event though that takes place. This is a big thing. In October of. 37. So it's about six months after he takes over, the, uh, Caligula takes over, he gets really violently ill. Oh, no. Uh, he is either poisoned, which is very common, as we've seen. Like, there's just a history of poison sure, throughout yeah. his family. Or he just gets really sick. Nobody's really sure what happened, but it takes him weeks or maybe months to fully recover. Oh, no. When he comes back, it's like a different person. Huh. There's kind of a school of thought either it broke his brain yeah. which certain Fever. like certain yeah, right, yeah. onsets of certain mental illnesses can have that devastating effect uh he could have had uh, a massive onset of some very extreme mental illness that triggered later in life um that hadn't been affected he could have had some kind of mental breakdown triggered by all his previous traumas um he could have it could have been poison and sure. he could have suffered from brain damage that did stuff yeah. Um, and also, uh, what's what we're going to talk about next? Some of it is definitely exaggerated. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't go from like I am fine to ah oh, kill everybody in sight. Right. A lot of this is exaggerated. Um, However, from the view of further back, there seems to be a point he got sick. But and this, yes, there is definitely a point where things change um, because after this, he either and then another thought is maybe. If there's no mental illness, if there's no brain damage from poison, if there's nothing like that, it gives him a sense of mortality. I vied for the throne. I've had people help me take the throne. People before me did stuff to do this. I need to secure my position and get rid of any threat. In the coming weeks, uh, he kills his cousin, Gemellus, the oh, guy no. who was in the, in the will with him. He has him killed. Straight up, just oh, so just clear that up, that little uh, yep. that we, little hiccup. We took him out of the will, just, but just to make sure. Now he's dead. Okay. He also has his father-in-law. Oh, that, that poor guy. Yeah, that guy didn't do anything. Didn't like know that's him. all. That's he's a footnote in history as just kind of having been in the wrong family at the wrong yeah. time. That's and he all was, he ever did. Also, uh, unless he was made noise about it, seemed fine with not being. He was. Yeah, he wasn't. Well. He wasn't stirring all up right. any trouble. He was like, okay, yeah, I'm. Uh -huh. I saw how my dad and my grandfather did all this crud. I'm I'm good. I'll just retire to my... Oh, you're mm -hmm. going to kill me. Okay. Yeah, That's fine. Okay. Um, to secure his own family, his own immediate family, so he's married. Uh, Caligula's married. Good. He has his father-in-law and his brother-in-law executed for treason. Oh. Like, immediately. Just to... Just to clear up all that up. Ends, uh. Just to clear that up. He exiles his sisters. The remaining... The, the two that aren't... That weren't La Villa. That weren't tied to this, this murder plot. He said, "Well, you betrayed my, uh, you, are, you 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 betrayed our family already. Well, one of you betrayed our family already, and I can't tell you any of you apart. They're all <laughs> I don't the same. Want to bother figuring? I'm it out. I'm not going to figure out. You're out of here. So he gets them out of there. Who's and, got time for investigations? And the only guy he keeps around is his uncle Claudius. Hey, Claudius. And Claudius was the brother of Germanicus. So this is a, this is another great soldier. Yeah. And he just keeps him there as a laughing stock, oh. as like a somebody he can make fun of. Really? Like a clown. Oh." Which is awful. That's almost worse. Yeah, right? Almost. Uh, because I believe, like, you know, members of his family are potentially being killed or yeah. kicked out or whatever. And he's just like, ha-ha, look at this idiot. Ha-ha. Um, so this all for sure happened. All right. All right? Jerk moves that all around. That for sure happened. He seems to have this double personality. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Did he, when he did these things, did he, like, 
try to explain himself? Did he defend the no, actions? No, he doesn't have to. He just said, no, okay. He doesn't have to, no. He's already secured the fact he's the emperor, he's the big dog, okay. he's in charge. Good boy. Um, the, uh, these are like murders. Like, he doesn't have... He has his brother-in-law and his brother-in-law, I think, are, are tried for treason, but it's yeah. a joke trial. It's just like, yeah, they're treason. I think he just has the Praetorian Guard handle it. Okay. Which, that's what they also do. That's why they're so scary, is not just our, uh, good fighters and killers in formation, they are exceptional assassins. Oh, boy. But you don't have to be a particularly good one when you just knock, 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 murder, murder, murder. I guess. <laughs> and, and that's, the, but that's what's scary about them is their unswerving loyalty to the emperor. Right. To a point. Let's you have to, you have to make sure the Praetorian Guard are happy. Yeah. Okay. This is a lesson that I feel Roman, like he didn't do it. Yeah. This is a lesson that Romans start to learn. So remember his buddy Macro? Yeah. Macro falls out of favor. Oh, well. No one's really sure why. Maybe it was in the murders. Yeah. <laughs> the theory is because Macro killed Tiberius for Caligula, mm -hmm. Caligula is covering his tracks. Oh, uh, sure. Or Caligula's bored because he's a madman. Sure, yeah. Or he's just a jerk. Yeah. He orders him to kill himself. Oh. Now, Macro I've being... I've run out of killing my people <laughs> for my killers to kill. Yeah. Macro being, like, the height of... Praetorian guard, man sure. of honor thing, does. Falls oh. on his sword, kills himself. Well, his wife kills herself, too, because she feels really bad about this. So all of these people are just dying left and right around this guy. He's going to run out of friends. He's going to run out of friends. And he is kind of isolating himself. Sure, he yeah. sets himself to be kind of set apart from everybody. Now, he's, this is where his double personality comes in. It's really weird. Um, he immediately begins a series of public reforms. He, sets, uh, he welcomes new people into the equestrian and senatorial orders. So that's the higher class of society. Okay. He allows you know, people with money who didn't have names you know, to come in and be part of the landed nobility. As long he, as they have money. As long as they have money. As long as they have property. As long as they have sure. a, a, a reason to be there. Uh, he, he promotes these people. Well, how generous. Well, that makes the senators really mad because they're like, no, we had a ruling class for a reason. Yeah. We're in charge. You can't let all these people plebs in. We're the patricians. What happened to good sense and order? How dare you? Like, they're fine with the murders, but we'll this... let this British guy into our room. I just Roman picture Senate. the senators are all uptight. <laughs> <laughs> this is parliament. How dare you? Um, he does that. He brings back elections. Which okay. makes the Senate furious-er. Because they like, ah, oh, great. Now the mob's gonna be in charge. Again. Awesome. When we let the mob run things, stupid things happen. Stupid and like, people, everybody. And then they kind of, there's not a lot of proof to that, though, because the mob hasn't been running anything in a very, very, very long time. Right. Um, but <laughs> the Senate, they want their power. Sure. They already have their power. They're already in authority. The last thing they want is to maybe lose that. All right. So it's very obvious why they don't want elections. Um because, God forbid, we have free and fair elections. We can't can't do that. No, man. Uh, so they, they're they not happy about that. He insists on financial transparency for all of the Roman expenditures wow. by the state. So f for the first time he since... He seems a very progressive person. Yeah, since, like, ever. Except the murders. He just comes out and he's like, yeah, this is what we're spending the money on. Okay. Yeah. Th nobody's ever seen the books before this. What? <laughs> this is not a thing. This So anybody can just come up and say, I want to I want to know what we're spending the money on. And they, uh, they're shown. doesn't matter who they are. They get huh. to see it. Total transparency. Wow. Um, he restores property that was lost in fires through, through either accident or riots or it's super close confines. There's no fire brigade. I mean, there is, but it's, you know, buckets. It's yeah. not. So not a fire is a constant se, problem, yeah. especially for poor people. Uh, wealthy people, they typically live in stone. Oh, okay. Fire's not as much of a risk. If it burns, it burns some of the stuff on the inside or some of the trappings, but not yeah, yeah. the structure. Whereas a lot of the people, it's like houses are kind of piled on top of each yeah. other. It's a if a fire marshal walked in, he'd condemn half of Rome. And they're like the first two pigs. They got stone. They got sticks yes, and, and sticks and stone. Straw. If a wolf comes in, and sadly, the wolf is the symbol of Rome. Oh, sure. So uh, it's always going to happen. <laughs> Those little pigs lose their houses all the time. So he feels bad about that, apparently. And also, if you have the people... Yeah, you want the people on your side. You want the people on your side. Um, and then he also abolishes taxes that he didn't think... Uh, that he felt were too harsh on the poor people. Oh, that's got to be popular, too. Super popular. But at the same time, 
he had Macro killed. Uh, he has these other people killed, killed and he just kind of has people uh, killed. He he has a trial, but it's basically like we're having a trial. You're guilty, dead. He's tough to love, I bet. He's very tough to love. It this is weird thing. Then he starts building crazy stuff. Uh, he builds a literal floating palace. Ooh. It is a giant wooden ship that was found in like 1950. They found the frame of this thing. It's colossal. It's like the size of a football field. Where they, how could they not find it till the 50s? Well, it sunk, and nobody looked for it. Oh, okay. And then they found it. Yeah. Like, oh. They, they, had to, they probably found it and had no way of digging it out. That's probably the one big problem with the floating palace is yeah. the sinking they aspect. Sink it. So he builds this massive thing at great expense. Sure. He builds more palaces. He builds... Uh, a super yacht, if you will. He did. He had, <laughs> he's one of the first to have a super yacht. He yeah. had a sex island and a super yacht. Huh. Hmm. Uh, allegedly, according uh, to Tacitus, who's a jerk. Yep. <laughs> we already talked about it. He wrote that crappy book. <laughs> He says, and also Suetonius says this too, though. So, and Suetonius is very, 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 very critical of Caligula. Okay. It, I, it's every page is just I was reading it today, and it's just he hates this guy. It's not good. <laughs> um, but apparently, he spent two point seven billion sesterces, each one is a silver coin, and bankrupted the entire nation of Rome. Whoops. Now this can't be true because uh, the next emperor handed out a 15,000 sesterce bonus to each member of the Ooh. Praetorian Guard. So they must have found some more, or he didn't. So, and, and he also was big on minting coins across the empire. So there's no way that he could have, like, stripped the treasury bare right. to do this. Also, it's really hard to gauge how much money he spent of Roman money or his own wealth, which yeah. was considerable. But either, it's another political tactic. And it's well. another political they, tactic. They, Plus, they emptied our coffers. Yeah, completely. remember... Like we just talked about, he's the first guy who made spending transparent. Oh, sure. So for all we know, he spent less than the previous guys. We just don't we know. We don't know. Interesting. Um, then there's this interesting thing where like he couldn't swim, but he insisted on, cr he wanted this massive bridge. So he was like crossing this bridge, and he crossed it on his, his horse. This horse is important because his name was Incantitus, or in Incitatus. Incitatus is a horse, which he legendarily tried to elect as consul of Rome. Yeah. There's this famous, it, I think it was a joke, because it never became consul, but there's like this commentary of, ah, I'd rather have my horse be consul than that jerk. Sure, yeah. But I think it got turned into, I want my horse as consul. Yeah, that's how to right? interpret. That's how to, yep. Yeah. Um, Latin. An interesting thing, though, is he had the breastplate of Alexander the Great, and he wore it while he was doing this, so he's big yeah. on spectacle. Uh, he starts dressing up as gods when he makes public appearances. He dresses as... Hercules, he dresses as Mercury, and weirdly enough, dresses as Venus, who's a goddess. Sexy. <laughs> so he comes out in person, he really wants to sell this concept of a literal god. Um, he comes out as Apollo, the golden god of the sun, and it's just all spectacle, look at me, I'm mystical. And he starts, according to Suetonius, his level of tyranny is terrifying. Uh, he sleeps with anybody's wife that he wants to, he sleeps with anybody's husband that he wants to. He sleeps with his sisters. He sleeps with, I don't think he sleeps with his mother. Perhaps he sleeps with horse. his horse. Oh. He uh, steals from people. He has people just casually murder. <coughs> Every time he has an execution, he forces the parents to watch. Uh, he steals money from the poor and he kicks grandmothers in the face. And its he's apparently the worst human being ever. It's just nonstop hatred of this guy. What Yikes. is much more likely is uh, he was... If he there, if there's enough occasions where he came out dressed as like a god, he definitely was pushing this. I'm a living god. I get to do what I want. Yeah. Uh, he did have these murders done. They are not like he had thousands of people killed. Because if you have thousands of people killed, you have a million very angry Romans. Right. That will rip you apart. This yeah. has been proven throughout history. I so guess you got to limit your killing to an yeah. amount. <laughs> now, uh, quick wrap up because we're at the hour mark. Uh, because we may as well just finish what Caligula started. Yeah. Uh, in the fourth year of his reign, so this is in four years he does all this all wow. happens. Okay, he's only in charge for four years. Um, he makes the Praetorian Guard mad. Uh oh, whoops. That's the one group yeah. you do not make angry. They're yeah. professional killers and hatchet men. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> That's have to do. their job. Um, 
And they really don't like that he's making fun of Claudius. They think that's super disrespectful. Rude. He's the he's you know he's blood of the emperor. He's your own uncle. Like that's horrible. Yeah. Um, also, the whole rampant killing thing. You're kind of crazy thinking you're a god. Yeah. I mean, but, it was fun at first. But yeah. Come on. Like, well, they just thought emperors sometimes do things we don't get. Sure. We don't see everything that they're doing. And maybe, you know, he's young. He can maybe come out of it. And yeah. they thought maybe the illness. Um, he, but still, you can only push still, it so long. But you can only push it so long. But he really makes a, a big enemy of a man named Cassius Carrera. They're, I want to pronounce it right. C-H-A-E-R-E-A. Carrea. That's it. Cassius Carrea. Okay. Uh, he's a tribune within the uh, Praetorian Guard. He's not in charge of it. But he's one of the officers. He's a senior officer. He calls him uh, Venus and Praxis. I think it's Praxis, which is the, what do they call it? I think it's Paraxis or something where if, if you die and you get a poop. He, it's, a, it's a joke on, there was a Roman god mm -hmm. who's symbolized by always having just a massive erection. Oh, okay. And he's like a god of fertility. Got it. Uh, but the Venus thing was he allegedly had like a light voice and he thought he was a sissy. So oh, that's okay. what he would call him, Venus. He'd be like, oh, oh hey, Venus. Ah. He was very mean to this guy. Yeah. And he kept poking him personally. So that's that's an alleged of like why this guy got mad. But you do not do what this guy did just because you got personally insulted. Like, <coughs> not as a Praetorian guard. You're like, whatever, dude. Yeah, theoretically. I, but I guess. I don't care. But sounds like he's got to come into a It moment. paints a picture of he's attacking literally like everybody around him. He thinks he's a god. He thinks he's untouchable. And it becomes this untenable situation for the Praetorian Guard. Yep. They talk to the senators and get, like, approval. Fellas, we got a plan. We got a plan. Yeah. And it's it's the killers that usually work for the emperor coming up with the plan. So they're like, okay, yeah. And you're not like that Sejanus guy, so this is cool. Yeah, we sign off on it. They murder him. They kill Caligula. Boom. They straight up just stab him to death and kill him. Oh. And they're like, no more Caligula. The Senate sees this as an opportunity. Let's restore the Republic. How about democracy, guys? And the Praetorians say, no. Oh. You guys are jerks. You just okayed us murdering the Emperor. Did you see what you let you us do? You just let us do that. And you have a history of making very poor decisions on behalf of the Romans. So who are going to pick? We're going to pick the next Emperor. And the Praetorian Guard picked Claudius. Huh. The guy who had been shunned and disgraced and insulted and treated horribly by Caligula, but had always been like of noble bearing. Um, and they say, that's the next guy. Now that's why they all get a pay bonus when oh, he becomes emperor. Sure. It's like, thanks guys, don't stab me. He was pretty old then too though, right? He was older, yeah. Because okay. uh, he would he would have been old enough to be uh, Caligula's dad. Yeah. Um, and we won't get into whether he's a great emperor or a bad emperor. No time. So, no time, we're out of time. But that's what happened. Caligula becomes emperor after this crazy background of just murder and maybe kind of pseudo incest and other stuff, and and because it's pseudo incest if it's step siblings, sure. it's still icky. Uh, but then Caligula gets raised by his maybe pedophile grandfather, uncle character, awful, uh, in a horrible situation, <laughs> becomes emperor. Does a good job for a little bit, and then suddenly things go very sideways hmm. in some ways. But in other ways, it's just this weird, he does these amazing public works things and reforms, but then also murders a bunch of people. Um, so you have to wonder, like, how much of his, like, supposed depravity, like the horse thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The incest and all this is because the Senate really didn't like that he empowered the people. Yeah. But we do have proof that he got killed. Uh, that he did kill other people, because um, that's cited by every local source. People don't like, remember your good things; they just remember your bad things. Just remember your bad things. I mean, we remember his his good things, but we also really know everybody knows the legend of Caligula as like this depraved. Well, not everybody. That's why we're here, the depraved <laughs> evil emperor, or just a not so good guy, a guy with some mental problems. Who maybe perhaps. had some mental problems, and people with mental, you know, that happens. But maybe don't make him emperor. Yeah, maybe not. Don't make a crazy person the guy with the control over the murder squad. <laughs> That's a very bad idea. <laughs> well, That's what James Bond villains are made of, man. Good job, Caligula. Thanks for the aqueducts, and sorry for everything else. <laughs> All right. Well, that was this week in uh, history. Uh, Caligula becomes emperor. Uh, yes, sir. 37. Uh, next week, we'll be discussing uh, uh, Vox in Excelso. The Vox in Excelso. 
I'm not telling you what that, that means. That happened in 1312. 1312, March 22nd. I'm going to figure out what's that. You want to know what that means? Learn Latin or tune in next week. <laughs> or both. This has been This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. Uh, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.